97.3 City FM. Relevant Radio. Always. the human rights of every body. This is what I have done. And so if I go to be it international forums, be it the village grounds of Nungwa or Shama or Buko, I will say that I protect the human rights of every body in Ghana because that is what I have read from the constitution and that is what I believe in. And I would leave the issue of whether or not homosexuality should be accepted to the society to decide the whole. for nothing for our persons that we represent. I want to humbly try to still get your clear view on it. You are a mother. <laughs> if any of your sons comes home mm. after 18 mm. with another man mm. and his family mm. and they are coming to that pay dowry to let you accept that they marry. Yeah. I think one of the issues. It is not easy for a minister like the one you are going. You will rely solely or most of the time on following it. What is your position with what they said that without legalizing or uh, what we call uh, giving space for homosexuality they may begin I'll go to the question of section 144 of the criminal code. And as you have said, it deals with unnatural carnal knowledge. Which offense is gender neutral? So both men and women could be liable as committing that offense. It's gender neutral, we, we must not forget that. In terms of section 104 on unnatural carnal knowledge, I believe in the principle of the rule of law. This is an offense in our statute books, which I would support its enforcement and its implementation, unnatural carnal knowledge, until it is removed from our books it remains part of our laws. And I'll be specific that this is it's unnatural carnal knowledge. It is a sexual act that is gender neutral. So I would, uh, I would be part of those who would support its implementation and enforcement. In terms of aid to countries, we all have our sovereignty, which I believe is very sacrosanct. And when you look at the transition from the OAU to the AU, you find out that under the OAU, sovereignty of a country was you know, very, very sacrosanct. 
every country has a strategic interest and they have a right to determine who to give aid to and who not to give aid to. I cannot sit here and say country A should not give aid to country B or country B should not give aid to country A. What is important is our agenda in Ghana. What we have put in place and how we say we will get to become a middle income status country. That is what is key. And I believe the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is in a better position. In fact, they have the mandate to shape out our foreign strategy or our foreign policy. They are in a better position to shape that out. So that is what I'll say about that issue. In terms of marital rape, I still support the fact that rape is rape. It doesn't matter who committed the rape. Rape is rape. Once the ingredients of rape have been satisfied in accordance with our law, then it is rape. And we know that after the statute revision, certain portions of the criminal code, certain sections were removed. So marital rape is a criminal offense in Ghana as we sit now, despite the fact that it wasn't part of the, uh, part of the domestic violence. In, in terms of my son, in terms of that question of my son, that is personal and that is private. And I have a right to privacy. This is about my competence, my capacity, my experience and my skills to be part of a team and to be part of a team to implement gender mainstreaming and social interventions in Ghana. You have answered a question for me, that as Ghanaians, we do not come to a conclusion. It is a subject matter for the society. This is something for the society. And we, I would leave it to the society to determine. What the late President Mill said was not different from what I said. He said, under no circumstances will homosexuality be legalized. I am saying that I will not promote homosexuality, but I will protect the rights of everyone in Ghana. This is what I'm saying. In terms of my writing in the... The right to sexual orientation is not recognized in Ghana. When you look at our normative, normative framework, in terms of statute law, in terms of our constitutional law, and even in terms of the international covenants we have ratified and where we're state parties, we have not recognized the right to sexual orientation. And as I said, I believe in the rule of law as a legal principle and would not support or promote a right that is not legally recognized by our laws. In terms of the right to remain human, uh, I, I don't really understand the right to remain human. So I'll look at the right to human dignity because I haven't seen any right to remain human, either the social cultural, the civil and political, either first, second, or third generation rights. I haven't seen that, so I'll rephrase the question and talk about human dignity. I believe human dignity is our very essence. Madam, just yes. for purposes of the record, yes. go and look at Article 30 of the 1992 Constitution before you proceed. Yes. So I would, um, I would look at human dignity and say that because of Article 12, and Article 13 of our Constitution, whatever rights are guaranteed in our Constitution, everybody in Ghana is entitled to those rights. And 
The interesting thing about the 1992 Constitution is that it provides us with standards, standards and norms that take cognizance of the context of the Ghanaian society. And since 1992, this constitution has worked for us and our courts have developed jurisprudence on this constitution. And one big success has been Article 25 on the right to health, uh, the right to education, which brought about FQ, school feeding, 